We firmly believe and simply confess that there is only one true God, eternal and immeasurable, almighty, unchangeable, incomprehensible, and ineffable, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, but one absolutely simple essence, substance or nature. The Father is from none, the Son from the Father alone, and the Holy Spirit from both equally, eternally without being or end, the Father generating, the Son being born, and the Holy Spirit proceeding, consubstantial and co-equal, co-omnipotent and co-eternal, one principle of all things, creator of all things, invisible and visible, spiritual and corporeal, who by his almighty power at the beginning of time created from nothing both spiritual and corporeal creatures, that is to say, angelic and earthly, and then created human beings, composed as it were of both spirit and body in common. The devil and the other demons were created by God naturally good, but they became evil by their own doing. Man, however, sinned at the prompting of the devil. This holy trinity, which is undivided according to its common essence, but distinct according to the properties of its persons, gave the teaching of, e of salvation to the human race through Moses, and the holy prophets, and his other servants, according to the most appropriate disposition of the times. Finally, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, who became incarnate by the action of the whole trinity, in common and was conceived from the ever-Virgin Mary, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, having become true man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, one person in two natures, showed more clearly the way of life. Although he is immortal and unable to suffer according to his divinity, he was made capable of suffering and dying according to his humanity. Indeed, having suffered and died on the wood of the cross for the salvation of the human race, he descended to the underworld, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. He descended in the soul, rose in the flesh, and ascended in both. He will come at the end of time to judge the living and the dead, to render to every person according to his works, both to the reprobate and to the elect. All of them will rise with their own bodies, which they now wear, so as to receive according to their deserts, whether these be good or bad, for the latter perpetual punishment with the devil, for the former eternal glory with Christ. There is indeed one universal church of the faithful, outside of which nobody at all is saved, in which Jesus Christ is both priest and sacrifice. His body and blood are truly contained in the sacrament of the altar under the forms of bread and wine, the bread and wine having been changed in substance by God's power into His body and blood, so that in order to achieve this mystery of unity, we receive from God what He received from us. Nobody can effect this sacrament except a priest who has been properly ordained according to the church's keys, which Jesus Christ Himself gave to the apostles and their successors. But the sacrament of baptism is consecrated in water, at the invocation of the undivided trinity, namely Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and brings salvation to both children and adults when it is correctly carried out by anyone in the form laid down by the church. If anyone falls into sin after having received baptism, he or she can always be restored through true penitence, for not only virgins and the continent, but also married persons find favor with God by right faith and good actions, and, de and deserve to attain to eternal blessedness. We excommunicate and anathematize every heresy raising itself up against this holy, orthodox, and Catholic faith, which we have expounded above. We condemn all heretics, whatever names they may go under. They may have different faces indeed, but their tails are all tied together, inasmuch as they are alike in their pride. 